Hey Rick Maniacs, welcome back to another episode of our Designer Studio series because we've moved locations a little bit now. Uh, today we're actually taking a look at a couple of John Canapa kits with Dan Siskin because John is now building off-site for Brickmania for I think eight or so models, something like that? Yep, yep. John, John's actually back in the Bay Area. So mm -hmm. he's, he's back in his ancestral home <laughs> and he's building remotely now. So uh, still, still part of the team, but... Um, Doing it from a distance. Yeah, cool. Well, and, and this is this is kind of the first two kits in his in his upcoming line. Or no, the striker was the striker first was one. the first. And these are the first two. So the uh, the striker is like ones. an update, right. mega update pack. And then yeah, this is these are new. These are completely uh, never been done before. Brickmania kits. Yeah, so. well, and, and obviously the the figures that come with will have landed in a little bit to talk about Haas, and they are especially with the staff car. Um, you know, that really, really adds a, a, another level to these kits. Yeah. But let's talk about the models initially. Maybe start with the L4 Grasshopper, just because this is a Pretty unique and crazy, <laughs> crazy air. Right, right. When John when John made it, he just made a generic uh, uh, grasshopper. L four mm -hmm. being uh, L stands for liaison, actually. So they right. use these airplanes. It's this case, it's it's model, it's a Cessna, um, and they would um, use these small craft to like fly. You know, the, the uh, different officers, whatever, use them to like either scout or literally move from one. Uh, for a location to another sure. to go, you know, visit troops and stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you, just, you just can't get places easily on the ground. You can in a helicopter, right? Or not a helicopter, small, an airplane. Airplane, yeah, right. <laughs> well, especially Pacific theater, European theater, etc. I mean, that you know, early on, all over the place. Like well, you've got a lot of lot of miles to cover. These these civilian planes were perfect because they're actually designed to be used, flown from like really rough airstrips. Oh, um, sure. Short takeoff and landing. So. Back in the civilian world, these would be like the you know the trainers, the things that that, that civilians would use to go from town to town, mm -hmm. do, do like you know learn how to fly on. So um, they were perfect for you know going to Europe, going to these these forward areas where they didn't have like proper runways, didn't have um, you know all these great facilities, huge clearings. They could fly sure. these things off of roads. They could fly any pretty much any farm field. You can you could fly with put one of these planes. down in. Interesting. Yeah. So. So they're called their liaison craft. There were several that the, the the Americans used during World War II. This is the L4 called mm -hmm. the Grasshopper. So. Well, and this one kind of has a uh, a special a special this one, little bit. This one to is it. special. When John John just gave us a generic L4 mm -hmm. generic Grasshopper, and the story of Bazooka Charlie uh, is famous. Is this this kind of crazy major decided <laughs> he you know he, he he could he could fly over the German lines. They kind of ignored him because it was just yeah, there's a little crop duster flying, you know, buzzing around. Right, what is it going to do? Right, and he, he was, he, he decided like, well, I can see all these, these enemy vehicles, I can do something about it. So uh, instead of like dropping a bomb or a grenade out the window, he, he actually fashioned bazookas to the, the struts that hold the wings up here. And uh, he had a little panel on, on, the, on the dashboard that he could push a button and it would electronically remotely fire the bazookas. So. Six six bazookas. You could fire them all at once, or you could fire them individually. So yeah, that is super super cool. What a what a, I mean, like for a tank buster, not exactly right. what first comes to mind, but a little bit of evidence of the ingenuity of people when they're put in those extreme situations. I right. mean, good for him. <laughs> so and just there's, there's no armor or anything on this right. point. It's it's it, it's made out of like fabric and balsa wood or whatever <laughs> and plywood. Um, and John did a pretty good job. I mean, this is a fairly sturdy model considering yeah. how small it is, and you can fit the pilot in there. So, mm -hmm. uh, the pilot does fit inside. We do. He's the figure. Lando will go over the figure. Yes. Um, we we could have done a, a little bit more generic one. It ended up costing a little bit more than than <laughs> than it, the base model did. But mm -hmm. you know, the, adding all the, the the stripes and stuff into the model, it did it did up the price of the bazookas and everything. But I think it's definitely worth it. It's it's a cute little kit. Um, it is a Kind of entry level brick mania aircraft. Yeah, I think so, so too. So you don't need to have a fighter plane, and this could be on any like little diorama because they, they could fly this plane from almost any field, and they would. Mm -hmm. They would be just behind enemy lines, or just behind the, the front lines, and they could take off, fly, you know, scout around, and report back uh, what they see over the over the tree line, right. stuff like that. So this would be uh, fairly common to see. There's 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 lots of stories where these things would be actually taking off under fire. Sure. Like their, wow. their airstrip would be overrun by, by German forces and they'd actually get in their planes and fly See off. See you later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
Well, and the invasion stripes obviously add that color that, <laughs> yeah. that is so awesome. You know, it kind of breaks away from that gray. But I like yep. what you said too about it being kind of an entry point aircraft model because you know the World War One aircraft usually a little more approachable from a from a cost standpoint, just with yeah. the bricks cost to, to build them. Uh, and it's tougher to do with stuff like the Spitfire, the Hurricane, etc., because they're bigger fighter aircraft. This is an awesome example of something if you're a huge World War Two buff and trying to break into the Brick Mania, you know, building. Uh, system. This is this is a great place to start. So, yeah, and I should also say that we are doing the German counterparts. So coming coming in the future, um, you will see the German version mm -hmm. and a German uh, staff car to go with it. A cool. new German staff car. So forward 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 staff car. So uh, just keep that in mind that these are this is this is just half of the the series. Mm -hmm. So very very cool. So that kind of covers everything on the L4. Uh, obviously, we got some stickers. Going up on, on front there, I actually yeah. thought in the sit rep initially that that was printing. That's how good those stickers on the front of that is. Yeah, um, but they they look sweet. Some tail numbers, some stuff on. Yeah, the, we on we the did we did stickers because of the crossing of the of yep. all the tiles. It would be really hard to get those to line up without stickers. So, um, maybe someday in the future we get better. Sure, <laughs> I'm keeps sure. the cost down though, and, and, and I think it uh, it definitely captures what you're trying to capture. Yeah, it's it's a cute little plane. I I I, I thoroughly enjoyed working on. I helped John John designed it. I sort of brought in the uh, the invasion stripes, the, mm -hmm. the, the the customization, the bazookas, and all that stuff. So I, I added to it, but it was fun. And John, the the bones of the of the kit are all, it's all John. Very very cool. A nice collaboration kit then, if you want to have a, a, a Siskin and a Canopy collab, <laughs> right, right. Uh, make sure to scoop that up. So then this one too, moving on to the World War II Army staff car. Sure. Um, so these vehicles, you know, this is kind of a generic base off of, you know, somewhere around that Buick Lincoln look. Yeah. But man, to build that with bricks, I mean, it's like all soft angles and round stuff. Right, right. It's How do you even translate 19, that? 1930s, everything right. was, uh, and, and 40s, everything was like futuristic streamlined, mm -hmm. including the vehicles, the cars. So, yeah, it's like, we would call it retro future, but back then it was like the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that was, yeah, John did a, did a great job. John, you know, it's... The wheel wells, everything, is, is, it's all rounded. You'll notice in some of the early military trucks, you'll see these kind of what we would call civilian cabs. Sure. Because before the war started, they were building all these stamped metal, you know, big fancy uh, fenders, the curved roofs, you know, the, the early decent halves were all that way. And then as the war progressed, they put canvas and stuff on. Right. Got rid of anything that would take extra time to make. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, everything's. If you're tying up production for a fancy body part, that's that's production. That Especially during wartime, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it could be spent making cartridges or something like mm -hmm. that. So, so they got rid of a lot of those features. But this is definitely there was no staff car. Um, this is it's a civilian car. Mm -hmm. Uh, turned into a military vehicle. So. Yeah, served also an, a, a, an important purpose. You, know, you talk about this kind of shuffling officers right. around, etc. That would have been the primary use of this. Would have been making sure the important people are in the places they need to be at the times they need to be there. Um, four custom printed elements on this, including the hatch, the doors, uh, and the four stars in the front. Yep. And then there's a nice little sticker for the top that crosses the elements. Yeah, again. Um, I like the feature of flipping that that <laughs> roof off so that you right. can get in an accident. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Yeah, that, that's that's this is all this is all John. This mm -hmm. is this is, in, is innovation. Um, the the car isn't wide enough to put two figures side by side, but I mean it's, we're trying to keep it in scale. Yep. Uh, your driver will fit in, and in the case the Lando will go over the, the figures that come with this. But it's this is more of a civilian version. So when you a civilian vehicle, when when you know the the United States Army was based in England at the time, they didn't need to have like you know like the military staff car. Sure. The the the, the, the there was something that you'd be having like say on the front lines. Mm -hmm. This would be behind the scenes. This would be like traveling around the, the, right. the English countryside. So you know therefore you're gonna have civilian cars. Um, famously, you know, uh, if there's a few famous generals like Eisenhower, for example, mm -hmm. would, would would always be seen in a staff car, you know. So this is it. <laughs> yeah, very very cool. Oh, then I should also say the front door. Oops, I pulled, took that off <laughs> for demonstration purposes. But these these front doors do open. So uh, the back doors do not. They are they are there, but they they do not. Uh, uh, not in fact open. Mm -hmm. Well, and ultimately the whole you know opening door thing, you kind of use that for the stage and your mock, depending on what you what you want to show. Yeah. But really, what you want to be able to do is get to the inside of it and be able to put your fingers yep. in there. And John made that super easy with yep. that top opening. That's definitely it's cool. It's cool. It's a cool little vehicle. Yeah, it's a sweet little thing. Okay, so now we've gone over the L4 Grasshopper uh, and the Stab Car. So now we're going to bring in Landon, take a little closer look at the awesome minifigures that are included with these two kits. All right, now for the second half of our designers studio episode here, uh, we got Landon in because both of these kids come with some awesome figures. So, uh, do you want to start with the staff car or get the grasshopper yeah, sure. done? Yeah, staff car. Okay, cool. Um, okay, staff car. 
you get the uh, general and you get the driver as well. Um, both of them, just right off the bat, check out those awesome uh, 3D printed uh, and uh, UV printed uh, hair and hat combo, and then um, off the officer's cap there. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, very very slick. Um, check out that little uh, hat, the hat right there, the cover, um, with some printing of the insignia. Um, let's see, so these uniforms, um, based off of, actually it's interesting, it's, it's, a, it's the British battle dress, and then it's been modified quite a bit um, for this jacket here. Um, I guess just he's a big fan of it at the time, and he got it sort of tailored for his own um, personal preferences. Sure. So it's it's interesting that all these uniforms are almost anything but. It's very it's very customized in real life. Mm -hmm. um, so this is trying to capture that as best I could. Um, some simulated wool texture on, on these figures uh, as well, uh, both of them, and some custom face artwork, custom artwork all across the board. So. Um, hey. <laughs> I did not think she would just jump off the table like that. Dan walked by. Mm -hmm. So pardon the interruption. All right, let's come back to these figures now a little bit here. Um, did you finish up talking about these staff car ones? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so pick them up now. I think this is a, a nice, cool combo. So. Yeah, it really is one of those kits, too, where like the figures are just as important as the kit itself. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, moving on here, we have Bazooka Charlie, right? Yes. Um, let's see, late war, uh, uniform, uh, leather jacket, got his pistol and a little scarf. I mean, this, this guy's kind of decked out um, to be flying that plane, and he's wearing the helmet, which is kind of interesting. Um, I guess, you know, he's, he's getting up close and personal with those freaking bazookas on his mm -hmm. uh, airplane, so, um, yeah, that's the figure for this guy. 360 printing, uh, color shifting on the trousers there, and... I think overall, it's a simple minifigure, but kind of a cool, uh, iconic looking, I guess. Yeah, it's a really, the, the kit in general along with the figure is super unique, so just, just all together. It's and the history super, behind that. Like super cool build. Yeah, right. It's really, really crazy. crazy. So That is awesome. All right, so both of these kits are available right now on BrickMania.com. Make sure to go check those out. Uh, links are in the description. Otherwise, Landon, thanks for joining me, and we will see you next time.